sometimes, man, I just want to slap the ever-loving shit out of Stephen A. Smith, man. I swear I do. I really do. I just want to just fucking slap the fuck out of him, man. Because he's so disingenuous, man, and so fucking phony. I hate when he go through that fucking preamble of, you know, let me just start off by saying that. I have nothing but the utmost respect. No, you don't, man. Stop fucking lying. Okay? Stop lying because you wouldn't have to keep saying that shit every fucking time. One thing I said on Max Kellerman, man. Max might have a lot of dumb takes on shit. But I don't get the impression. At least for the most part. He might be a Kobe hater. He might, you know what I'm saying, have some weird takes and. I know people get tired of him saying PR is not a perfect stat, but you know it gives you an idea. You know, what I mean, he, he kind of is limited in some of his arguments and shit. But I don't get the impression that he has this uh, this agenda going on all the time, man. Like, look, okay, they were talking about Russell Westbrook, right? And um, Russell Westbrook recently said that when it comes to criticisms of his game, he really doesn't give a, he really doesn't care what anyone thinks about it, like as far as his game is concerned, and that's a good, in my opinion, that's a good mindset to have when you're a basketball player, I mean, at least, especially someone who's not close to you, you know what I'm saying, he's basically talking about analysts out there, okay? And I think the reason why Stephen A. Smith took that stance like that is because he felt like that Russell Westbrook was probably talking to somebody like him. This is my thing, okay? Ever since Christmas, the Houston Rockets have been balling, man. Ever since they fully committed themselves to small ball, they have become a different team. Now, whether or not they're a championship level team, it's another matter. But they become another team, and the Russell Westbrook is playing at a level even greater. I would say he may not be putting up the same assists and rebounding numbers he did in his MVP years or his years with the OKC Thunder, but the last couple of years. But this is arguably his best season, um, especially when it pertains to consistency and efficiency. Okay, um, that was one of the knocks. And look, I'm a Russell Westbrook fan. You guys know it. All right? But that's one of the knocks that people had on him. And I have to be like, I'm honest. I'm like, okay, well, it's true, you know? I like the guy, but it's true. Okay, one of the knocks on him is he plays hard. That's something that nobody can take away from him. Perhaps nobody on a day-to-day -day basis plays as consistently hard, hard as, as Russell Westbrook. Maybe in history. Okay? Very few players can match his overall intensity. You know what I'm saying? One of the few players that come to mind off the top of my head is maybe like a Latrell Sprewell or something like that. Okay? Like just everyday like intensity. Um, but sometimes, you know, his shot selection, his decision making out there, his time, at times it seemed like he was playing too hard all the time <clears throat> and going at 100 miles an hour. Maybe sometimes you need to slow it down a little bit. Okay, I get that. But what I don't like is when he's doing these things now, okay, it's like they're trying to make Russell Westbrook into something he's not. Russell Westbrook, this is what pissed me off, is toward the end when Max Kellerman was mentioning how now, Russell Westbrook, maybe it's taking a long time, but at the age of 31, all right, a year that I thought going into this season, the first early games I saw, I actually thought, I said, you know, man, Russell might be actually starting to down, like going on a downward slide. But he's, he's actually having a career year with efficiency. He's shooting 47% from the floor. That's the highest he's ever shot in his career, okay? The highest he's ever shot in his career. And since that Christmas Day debacle, when they got blown out on national television by the undermanned Golden State Warriors, right? A game where 
where Westbrook shot like 0 for 8 from three-point range. <clears throat> Ever since that game, Westbrook has averaged about 32 points, almost eight rebounds, and seven assists, and has shot 53% from the floor. 52%, I think, actually, from the floor in those games since then, since that Christmas Day game, all right? In the games that he's actually played in, which is 20 games since then, they've gone 13-7. and seven. Now, what makes that impressive is the fact that during that stretch, no matter what I heard an analyst say recently, saying they didn't really play anybody, that's bullshit. If you look at uh, the Rockets' schedule since that Christmas Day game, They've actually beaten some notable teams and played some notable teams. If I remember serving them correctly, they beat the Lakers. All right, they played the Lakers twice in that stretch. They beat them one time. In that game, Russell Westbrook had 41 points. And <clears throat> in that game, the Lakers had a huge lineup, and the Rockets still beat them. They beat the Denver Nuggets twice. All right, they beat the Utah Jazz. All right, they beat a, a couple other notable teams I can't think of off the top of my head. So they've been beating some teams. You know what I'm saying? So, look, I'm, I, I'm not a fan of small ball. I still believe that you need to have a, a dominant center or at least a capable center, more than capable center, to win in the playoffs. Will they prove everybody wrong? I don't know. That's what makes the playoffs so exciting. You know what I'm saying? But what gets me is all this, this, this Westbrook hate. Now he's doing the things that we want him to do, and you're still trying to find a way to criticize him. When, when Stephen Smith said, oh, well, he's still shooting on 25% for three. Okay, who gives a fuck, man? Look, 97-98 season, prior to that season, Jordan injured a, uh, fi a finger on his shooting hand, right? And throughout that season, it interfered with, with his outside shooting, Okay. It interfered with his outside shooting. He just didn't have any touch for the three-point line out. He just didn't have a, a feel for the shot. So what do you do? Fuck it. I'm just not going to shoot threes. Unless they're open threes, I might shoot it. He just did not shoot threes. He only took, what, like one and a half a game, I think, on average next season. He, he just stopped shooting. Russell Westbrook, to his credit, since Christmas Day, before that, he might have been taking like five a game, maybe six a game. He's down to two. And while he's never going to be Steph Curry or Damian Lillard, he's shooting about 28%, you know, since then. Never, He's never going to be a 40% three-point shooter. It's just not, okay? Uh, what you want from him is a guy, it, it, I think with Westbrook, an ideal percentage for three for him would be something like 33 34%. If he could get, get up to that range, uh, which I think he's actually been shooting since the um, trade with Clint Capella, if you go a little bit further down the road, I think since then, he's, I think since the Clint Capella trade, He's actually averaging 34 points, uh, seven rebounds, seven assists, uh, and shooting 34% from three since the actual trade. The game, when you got Clint Capella out of the, out of the picture, all right, the spacing is just wonderful for Westbrook, all right? A fast-paced, uh, up-tempo style suits Westbrook more so than the half-court situation. Um, also... Westbrook is still awesome at getting to the paint, scoring in the paint. These are his strengths. He's probably the most athletic point guard in NBA history. Like I said before, I think Russell Westbrook would be much more appreciated if this was 2000 instead of 2020. All right? The way he's playing is phenomenal. He's averaging like 20 points per game in the paint since, I think, January the 1st. Um, even his shooting style, the, the types of shots he's taking in the paint are more efficient. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, he's taking like, and one of my subs pointed this out. He's taking almost like, it's almost like he's been, and this sounds crazy, but he's almost playing like a a, a, a forward down there, like with, with the jump hooks and he's he's his shot selection. I'm telling you, man, this guy's a lot smarter than people give him credit for, man. A lot of people make it out that he's like this mindless idiot that's just out there playing off sheer talent. And that gets to me sometimes, man, because to get to this level in the NBA, you can't be a fucking idiot. You can't be. There's nobody that's that's fucking there's nobody that's that fucking talented that's gonna make it to the NBA, let alone be an NBA star, and you're playing off a of sheer talent, but you're a complete moron. Now maybe you make fucking stupid mistakes or mental mistakes um down the stretch of games. Okay. But that's just you know, that's part of the learning process for this dude. Okay? Um I'm not gonna lie. I am rooting for Russell Westbrook. I'm not a Rockets fan, but I'm rooting for Russell Westbrook because I want this guy to get out of the first round so I can stop hearing people saying that, you know, these guys on TV saying that he can't get out of the first round. He can't get out of the first round. He's a proven loser. You know, uh, he can't shoot. Look, man, Trace McGrady is one of the all-time great players, right? Hall of Famer, even though I don't know what necessarily he was first ballot, whether he should have been first ballot, but he was a Hall of Famer. But Trace McGrady never got the first round when he was a star, okay? He never got the first round. Although he did play against some top tier competition in the Western Conference. That's also uh, a fact for when he was, for Russell Westbrook, for his career, okay? Um, it can be said, too, that, you know, Trace McGrady, when he was with the Orlando Magic, he was scoring a lot of points, but they weren't winning. You know what I'm saying? They weren't They weren't really winning. They had one year where they make it, made it to the playoffs, and they lost in the first round. They blew a what, uh, two games to none lead against the uh, the Detroit Pistons, I believe it was, right? So, he never won. Plus, he only shot 43% from the floor for his career. All right? And this ain't a little guy. We're talking about Trace McGrady, who's 6'8", 210 pounds. And people get on, used to get on Kobe, and I did too. People used to get on Kobe for his shooting percentages. But McGrady only shot 43% from the floor. But nobody talks about Trace McGrady's shooting percentages. But people talk about Russell Rushbrook because he shoots 43.6% for his career, which is actually higher than Trace McGrady. So this is the thing, man. Russell Rushbrook right now is playing at a very high level. A career, he's having a, a career best stretch right now. All right. One of the things that people have always uh, have always talked about with Westbrook is his lack of efficiency and lack of consistency at times. All right. You put up numbers, but the numbers don't. Oftentimes, like I guess some people say you put up empty numbers, which I never really bought into that because when I used to watch. Westbrook when he was with the Thunder, especially the MVP year, there were many games where Russell would enter the game for the Thunder, and if they were down by five, he would play for seven, eight minutes, and when he would go out, all of a sudden the Thunder are up by ten. Then when he go out, <clears throat> when he go out, the bench and the remaining starters would blow a fucking lead. I used to see it time and time again, but the headline would say, you know, uh, the Thunder loses. Then you also got to remember the fact that in all those games where Russell Westbrook had triple-double, when he was with the Thunder, 80% of the times they won. So it wasn't at the detriment of the team. 
It's just that he didn't have a great team around him. Nor, more importantly, did he ever have a great coach. He still doesn't have a great coach, in my opinion, than Mike D'Antoni. But I think he's a better coach than Billy Donovan. I don't understand why the fuck Billy Donovan would still have a job, to be honest with you. What exactly has Billy Donovan done as a head coach other than fucking keep losing the first round and get severely outcoached by, what is it, Mike Stotts, of all people, last year? But at the end of the day, man, Russell's going to be a bona fide first ballot Hall of Famer. He's maximizing his strengths, all right, this, this season so far, minimizing his weaknesses. And uh, you got to give credit to the James Harden. All right, James Harden has altered his game. Westbrook has sort of become, in the last 20 games or so, 25 games, the more dominant of the duo, and it's working. Earlier on when they were having James Harden average almost 40 points a game, everybody was just standing around for the most part, that was not working. Okay, that wasn't working. The way they're playing now, it's working. All right, so tell me what you guys think.